Hi everyone, welcome back to Dragonfly Engineering. So I'm going to try a new series where we make a quick part during the day for any number of reasons and, and today's use is going to be a fixturing tool that will attach this ultrasonic knife, which is, if anyone's not familiar, it's a, basically an ultrasonic actuator that vibrates a knife blade, like an X-Acto blade, at very high speed, like 20 to 30,000 hertz. And that vibrational energy actually helps cut through things with the, the heat that's generated from the mechanical vibrations on the little razor blade itself. And for those who've watched This Old Tony, kind of the OG of the YouTube maker universe, he actually showed this ultrasonic cutter, which I promptly went out and purchased, on his show. And he took this apart and showed how it worked and everything. So if you want to learn more about ultrasonic cutters, you can, you can check out his episode. Unfortunately, the, the, which I believe a Korean company makes this, they don't make this model anymore, as far as I could tell. So I'm gonna, I, and I use this thing a lot during the day, but I went and bought a new version, I think from the same company and probably all the same interior bits and pieces. And this one, we're gonna make a bracket that uh, clamps onto the outside diameter of this knife, this plastic housing, and bolt it onto the end effector of a robot. And then also what we're gonna do is hot wire this button, which turns on and off the ultrasonic energy on the knife with, with a wire either connecting inside of this control unit or out here at the button itself to have the robot be able to turn this, this cutter on and off. After which, the robot will be able to cut sprues off of plastic parts or modify plastic parts or even cut out sheets of plastic with the ultrasonic cutter. So, stay tuned and enjoy how we make it. Thanks. Okay, so I designed this bracket in SolidWorks CAD system, which is what you see on the screen here. And you can scroll back through the design history to the various steps. So here I basically just sketched a coaxial circle, as you can see with the proper dimensions for the tool, and then extruded that into a cylinder. And then you can see how I just went and added more features. Uh, these are screw holes and mounting holes, a slit for the clamp to kind of flex onto the body of the, of the knife and then some fillets to account for the tool radius because uh, you can't machine sharp corners with an end mill uh, in this orientation that we're going to use. So then, so that's the final design and then next we're going to switch up to the CAD system, so a different computer, or the CAM system, I'm sorry. And here you can see the same model that I imported and we will start with a pilot hole down the middle and then a, a larger diameter hole to hog out the inside followed by a half inch end mill that's going to face off the top of our stock which is basically just a blank stock of of aluminum without any precision dimensions i just mount this in the vise and face off the top and machine out the part from inside so here you can see the profile of the inside and the outside using the same half inch end mill and we're going to effectively just hog out the inside after we cleared with a large drill bit and then go and do the outside profile. Now, if, if we zoom in here, you can also see how I've got a coarse or a rough cut and a finish cut. There's uh, basically two sets of lines there. So the operation is gonna be to cut out each height and then do a finish cut. So here you can see how I'm basically, I've just got a, a rough piece of aluminum that I put in the mill and I'm machining the first corner to set basically the origin of the part inside of this block of aluminum. You know, so this is kind of the quickest way to do things is you just basically just have oversized aluminum and then you just cut, cut in to find where the part is going to exist inside of that block of aluminum. So here I'm kind of testing and making sure I can cut all the way across. And now I'm doing the same thing with the Z axis. So I'm plunging down into the depth of the aluminum Again, so I don't have to do an arduous step of squaring up the aluminum. And here I'm actually setting the tool height because I know I cut down inside, but I'm going to double check to make sure that I actually don't leave the, uh, the surface of the aluminum as, as we machine the whole part. So I'm kind of just skimming along the top to make sure that uh, the part will remain inside of the aluminum block that we've loaded in. And then shortly thereafter, I will do the tool tip touch-offs and this basically sets the height of the tools you know so the first was the half inch end mill and now where I'm touching off the first 
pilot drill and then the much larger drill. I think this is 7 eighths or approximately 22 millimeters. And then it's time to run the program. And it's as simple as that. So this will be a time lapse of showing like the different machining operations. This is the drill pick for the first clearance hole. Uh, you usually have to drill out the center for a larger drill bit like this one because on larger drill bits basically it doesn't really cut material out of the center web part you know so you kind of have to clear out the flat area of the drill bit for these larger ones and the rpm was reduced on this as well so that uh, you know i don't start melting the aluminum i think there is probably three horsepower of or let's see what is that that's about two kilowatts of power that was being dumped in friction into this tool so that's why I've got the constant um, coolant flowing so that I don't start melting the aluminum and building up a welded edge of aluminum onto the drill bit. It's kind of important. I think this RPM was 900 RPM, maybe 600 RPM, somewhere in that range. So after I hogged out the material, then we go back in with a half inch end mill and we do the profile cut that we saw in the toolpath program that was written right before this, this machining operation. So now we're over on the bandsaw and basically we're just going to uh, cut out the, the top side machining profile of the part and thus we've got the top and the sides that are finished. Here I'm going to switch out the vise jaw with a basically a v-groove to help re uh, retain this part in the vise so that it doesn't try to rock itself out. And this is a soft jaw, so you can just have a rough cut. And here we're going to face off the back of the part using a shell mill. Uh, sometimes it's a good idea to actually machine away some of the excess aluminum, but I didn't do that here. And you'll probably hear how it will tear out here pretty soon. So now we've got some side operations to do, which is effectively just drilling and tapping the clamping screw holes, as well as the mounting holes for this bracket onto the end effector of the robot.
So here I'm actually bandsawing open the flexure joint. So after the screws are threaded into those two holes and we cut all the way through the, the closed loop of this clamp, then it will flex a little bit. So as we tighten the screw down, the, the hoop that we create with this expansion joint that's made by the bandsaw blade will constrict onto our knife. All right, so it's now time for final assembly. You can see our finished part here. And we slide that guy onto our plastic housing of our ultrasonic knife. And then uh, the fit actually worked out pretty good. I added a little bit of clearance because now what we're gonna do is add these M4 screws, which are clearance hole on one half of the clamp and then thread it on the other. And then when I tighten these threads down, the hoop that we've machined is going to clamp down onto the body of the knife. And these, these schemes or this structure has always worked out pretty good for me. It just always seems to just clamp down good. If you give yourself, you know, like a 20 thousandths clearance, then you effectively just clamp down on the entire radius or diameter of the part. And this is just an up close view of the final assembly of the clamp onto the housing of the ultrasonic knife plastic body. So the next step is to try to hot wire the switch inside of the housing of this ultrasonic knife such that the robot can turn on and off the ultrasonic actuator inside. So we got to open up the housing and get access to the little uh, finger switch that's uh, that white button at the top of the part right there or of the, of the knife body. And I actually tried to get inside of the main unit where the drive circuit board is but I discovered that this this ultrasonic knife is actually actuated or turned on and off by a microprocessor. So it's not just a simple on off switch, but it's a signal that goes to the, to the control logic inside of the main housing. But here you can see how we've got the, the cover off of the hand unit. And that's the button that we need to basically hot wire in with our own leads to the, to the robot itself. This is an up close view of it. And unfortunately though, yeah, we basically have to duplicate the switch with two wires coming off of that little circuit board. And here you can see I'm just basically trying to determine if that was the case and as it turns out, it was the case. So it's the unit actually is looking for a signal to activate that ultrasonic actuator, which is what you see right there. That's that stack of plastic rings and then metal rings. That's the stack of piezoelectric crystals which create the vibrational energy which transmits along that metal shaft and into the razor blade at the end of the unit there. So here I've, I've got an external cable that I've stripped the end off and I'm figuring out the length of the wire. And here I've got a little diamond tool on a Dremel to cut a slit for this. It's kind of an oval shaped wire, like or maybe a floor type of wire where it's like can lay it down on the floor and walk over it maybe I'm not sure but anyway Roger gave that to me <laughs> um, here I'm fitting it into the slit there so that it's secure and then we get the original strain relief back in there and kind of weave the wire around inside of the guts of the casting and the next we are going to strip those wire tips solder or tend the ends or add solder to the end of the wires and then we're gonna solder those onto that little black push button switch that you can see right there. It's a little tricky because I'm basically doubling up on that switch. So there's existing wires and solder contacts. So I have to be a little careful to make sure both wires are soldered down. And then uh, put it all back together. That was a little injection molded white um, cap for the connector. And then that other little circuit board was an LED to indicate that the ultrasonic energy is on and off and then we put our clamp back on and we are close to trying this thing out so here we turn the power on and then I want to demonstrate how the the little microcontroller receives this the signal so you can see when the wires touch the light doesn't turn on but when they release then the, the light turns on which means the ultrasonic energy is on so it's a falling contact turns on tighten this down and then we should be good to go. This is basically just to prove out that it works. 
I don't have a magnet disconnect because there is potential for some force that needs to be applied. So the magnet mount uh, may actually knock this thing off. So there's a little bit of risk that I've rigidly mounted this, this tool onto the end effector. But there we go. I think we are set. So the other end of this wire will go to a switch, which is controlled by the robot controller. It won't actually actuate with a voltage output, but I, but I do need to have a real switch or a relay or probably a solid state relay that acts like a switch would work as well. So anyway, thanks for watching this quick part fabrication and installation, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.